Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with rank 14 of our F1 Manager 24 Let's Play. Yes, we return this weekend to the best Formula 1 track in the world. We're here in the Ardennes Forest for the Belgian Grand Prix, of course. If you missed out on the last video uh, that went live a couple of days ago from Hungary, I would highly recommend going back and checking out. We have all but decided uh, that sadly I think Liam Lawson is going to get dropped by the team as we head into the summer break. However, we have got a few more important bits and pieces that we need to do before then, including our own board performance review. So let's see uh, how apparently the board have already told me how they feel about me. Come on, let me let me stop skipping. We've, we've got some new side pods as well. Apparently, which I guess is good news. Uh, of course, if you're new around here, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed uh, to the channel as well. Of course, we're trying to hit 3k subs at the moment. We are incredibly close to doing so. Uh, so we are going to try. I mean, we can't do it. We can't do any new side pods at the moment. We are still uh, in desperate need of cash uh, within the organization. A little bit of an update. I've had to put some old car parts back on Lawson's car this weekend uh, because, yeah, Yuki may as well have the stronger car ready for the final race before the summer break so yeah we've, we've got a little bit of bits and pieces to get through let's take a look at how the board actually feel about us they're not particularly confident right now they're satisfied with our performances um they're satisfied with our objectives and our finances but we are still that one place below where they're expecting us to be by the end of the season. Uh, and of course, yeah, our long-term goal uh, in 2026 is to score points in 50% of the GPs. We managed two so far this year. But I am hoping with those big upgrades uh, into the second half of the campaign that we might be able to do a little bit more there. So, yeah, let's take a look at scouting some potential new drivers then uh, to take the spot of Liam Lawson's of course we're gonna have to be looking most likely down at like Formula 2 or the Formula 3 level Zhou Guan Yu could be one Teo Porsche could be one even Pato Award over at McLaren the problem is a lot of these guys aren't that highly rated unlike um Liam Lawson inside this game uh, but yeah he's just not feeling it at the moment I think we're gonna try uh, I mean, how is Ricardo higher rated than Albert in this game? How much do they hate Alex Albon inside F124? That's a real shame. Um, maybe we try and go... I mean, Stoffel Van Dorn's got a bit of F1 experience behind him. He could be a good one to try and get in. Antonio Giovinazzi, Robert Schwartzman, of course, he's actually racing uh, or practicing even this weekend uh, in Formula 1. I think we are going to try and scout out Fred Vesti. I think... Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do some with some F1 experience. I'm going to try and scout out Stoffel van Dorn. He's a bit older, but he probably deserved a better shot in Formula 1 than he actually ever got. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the team come back with. And we might try and hire him for the second half of the season. Um, but, yeah, returning, though, to Belgium this weekend, of course, you know, still the goal is to try and get a little bit more money uh, into the team ready for the second half of the season. Any other important emails that have come through? We still haven't had any confirmation from Enrico Cardile uh, as to whether he's actually willing to stay on with the team for the second half of the year. So plenty going on behind the scenes as well. Um, but yeah, let, let's head into the Grand Prix weekend. This weekend, we're in Belgium in the picturesque province of Liège. Halfway through the season, it's too early to call the championship. Can teams make good before the summer break or will they be hoping for a reset? Oh, here we go. This is what we expect to see in the Ardennes. Changeable conditions pretty much throughout the weekend. That is absolutely fantastic news. And I can't wait to see as to how everything is going to go down. But of course, yeah, first of all, we'll head out into, uh, into free practice. Of course, yeah, this circuit, very, very high speed. You know, it'll give us a good indicator as to how we're looking ready for Monza uh, in a couple of races time. Although, to be fair... Based on the car performance so far this year, Zandvoort should actually be one that we're quite excited for as well. Um, because, yeah, obviously, that circuit, you know, very high downforce. And so far, yeah, the high downforce tracks have really been where this car's strengths lie as well. So we might kind of steer into that more and more uh, as the season goes on. You know, really try and focus on making sure, uh, that, you know, that maybe when we head to, like, Mexico, for example, uh, we've got a really good, good car that, you know, might be able to try and fight for points. We're still, obviously, that little way behind the big five teams. So, obviously, yeah, as we saw with Yuki last weekend... 
absolutely dominated against the likes of Ricardo, uh, who's been our main rival throughout the season. Um, but yeah, still didn't quite have enough to really kind of go up against some of those other drivers there. As how is the rain meant to be looking throughout this session? I believe it's meant to stay pretty level, so I think we're just going to see intermediate conditions uh, right the way through. I'm also just going to tell Lawson, don't stack it. Um, you know, don't don't crash, avoid the curbs, everything like that. Uh, because I, I really could do with him not bidding it yet again in free practice. Anyway, let's sim forward just a little bit then, of course, early on. Let's just try and make sure, yeah, that... I mean, you guys have been telling me, obviously, about Liam Lawson. How he's just about a confidence thing. But how many of you have struggled with him as well uh, inside your saves? On paper, he's a really good driver to have. In practice, at least in my experience, he's a pretty bad driver to have. Um, which is a little bit of a shame, to be honest. Because I do genuinely like him in real life. Uh, and I think, you know, he... You know, hopefully, apparently, Helmut Marko said he's going to get a seat next year. You know, I quite like that. I like the idea that, you know, Lawson, I feel like, does deserve a run uh, in Formula 1. And we'll kind of have to wait and see as to how he's able to get on IRL. I mean, he did well last year uh, in that V-Carb car as well. But, yeah, just in this series, he hasn't kicked on in the way we would have wanted there. Uh, looks like people have opted for the dry compounded tyre, despite the fact they're quite clearly slower. So, not too sure how that works. And, yeah, the rain now started to ramp up again then, so... I mean, it's typical Belgian weather, isn't it? Just kind of a little bit of a mix-up. You know, it's a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, and everybody, you know, you don't really feel like you can get particularly worthwhile data uh, to provide you, yeah, throughout the rest of the weekend. As I think we are pushing one of the V-carbs along as well, just in front. Is Yuki just pushing that V-carb along? Yes, he is. Just tucked up under his gearbox all the time here. He's finally made the move happen. Uh, as Lawson as well there. Just a little bit further up the road. Perhaps doing the same with Zhou Guan Yu. Now, luckily, again, this is another track where I've actually done a little bit of running uh, in this game before. Obviously, doing our challenge mode series. So, I know kind of where the car, you know, where is going to be good to use the battery. Where, you know, maybe it's better just to hold off of it. So, hopefully, we can use that to our advantage as well around the weekend there. So, traction we've got too much of. Cornering we've got a bit too much of. So, we'll try... And just take a little bit more out of the front. I mean, they don't want us to run much ring at all, do they, here at the moment? Uh, as toe out, will that fix things? There we go. That's much better. So we'll send Liam Lawson then. We'll get him all sorted. And we'll head back out onto the circuit then. As Yuki, on the other hand, not so happy uh, with the other car as well. So we'll bring him back into the pit lane. Uh, and you can just see again. Yeah, we just... We, we tried to run a bit too much wing, apparently. Despite the fact it is meant to be changeable conditions as the weekend goes on. So we'll kind of wait and see as to what happens with that then. A little bit too much oversteer. If we go like that, Yuki Tsunoda as well reckons he'll be much, much happier with the car he's got underneath him. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still really enjoying F1 Manager at the moment. You know, we're, we're, we're having a good routine, actually. I'm both loving this and MotoGP24. So I kind of like doing them on alternating days. Uh, I'm actually away this weekend, though. Uh, but I'm hoping I can continue trying to get videos out from both of the games as well. Uh, there might not be a video Saturday, but I think we're going to come back Sunday after the real-life Dutch Grand Prix uh, with a video as well from this game. So that should hopefully be good fun. And yeah, just, you know, thank you to everybody still for the continued support. You know, I know F1 Manager and MotoGP aren't the biggest games in the world or the most popular games in the world. But yeah, I'm really loving kind of doing these campaigns uh, in both of them and kind of hoping it can continue on into the future as well there but coming towards the end of free practice we should get a little bit more feedback as again it's drying out a little bit but i don't think it's meant to stay that way yeah it is meant to ramp up again pretty soon so we will leave the drivers on the intermediates we're going to carry through a lot of spare sets of tires uh into the rest of the weekend which i guess is good news uh we're still one and two on the board weirdly a lot of drivers haven't opted to go out i'm expecting the likes of a to probably go quicker than me as soon as he heads out onto the circuits. There we go. Yeah, time's definitely improving now from some other drivers. Lat Stroll, top of the board in things I never expected to say. Inside F124, but yeah, or F1 Manager 24. But yeah, we're getting some good data out of the car as well. Obviously, that is the most important thing for us. You know, we're not really interested uh, in kind of, you know, setting the, you know, the timing screens alight or anything like that. We're far more just worried about making sure that both of our drivers are comfortable uh, in the cars they're in. Which Liam Lawson, once again, then, is seemingly very, very happy with the wheels underneath his wagon. 
Hopefully Sonoda will provide us with similar feedback in just a moment. And I mean, look at that. That's pretty good going. We can make some very minor tweaks, but I don't think we want to alter too much in this car. If we just go like that, that's looking... Yeah, we're pretty bang on, aren't we? If we go like that, we might be ever so slightly better. A little bit too little on the traction front now. Uh, so I guess we'll try and go like that. There we go. Pretty much everything. Oh, no, that's exactly what we were running. We'll go like that. We'll make the final minor tweak on his car. Uh, we'll just double check with Yuki as well that he's pretty happy with how things are looking. Yeah, there we go. Yuki much, much happier now with the car as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get a couple of bits tweaked. And I think I'll see you guys in qualifying. Now it's time to see who come out on top as qualifying gets underway. Qualifying at Spa is one of the most exciting sessions of the year and the season's longest lap leaves little margin for error. Drivers need to give it their all whilst avoiding any mistakes. Karun, there's Yuki Tsunoda. How would you describe things for him at the moment? It's obvious that they're feeling confident today, and that's sure to be an advantage. I'm keen to see what they'll manage here. Let the competition commence. Well, yep, this is meant to be the only truly sunny day of the weekend here in the Ardennes, so we've got to try and make the most of it. Of course, most of our focus has been put into the quarter, into the uh, wet weather, but yes, yeah, so we have a look quickly at the setups once again. You can just see there a little bit of uncertainty between both of the drivers with the car. Need, obviously, to have as much traction as we possibly can, but just want to try and reduce the braking stability, apparently. That, I think, is a good tweak again. Uh, with Yuki's car there. Can we see both drivers into Q2 this weekend? Uh, you know, I'm not, not really expecting Liam Lawson to deliver the goods, to be completely honest with you all. But you never know, we might be able to spring a little bit of a surprise as well there. It's just trying to tweak everything we possibly can there. Apparently the car now a bit too oversteery. So I'm not too sure how that one works. But yeah, some minor tweaks being made at the end of uh, free practice. As we head our way into Q1 then. So... Yeah, let's take a look. I don't believe there's meant to be any rain at all, which is good news. So we'll get both drivers out when there's a bit of space on the road. But as always, I think most of our qualifying effort is going to have to be put into the first car. I just want to double check. Yeah, Lawson isn't being told to avoid high-risk curbs or anything else anymore. So Yuki Tsunoda then about to kickstart his first flying lap here from the Arden. We haven't really seen any dry lap times all weekend, so I've really got no idea of what kind of times we need to be aiming for. Uh, looks like we've still got the old version of Spa, though, inside F1 Manager, which, I'll be honest, is a little bit of a surprise. Doesn't really change anything in this game, I guess. Um, but it would have been quite nice, yeah, to see the new version of Spa. And worryingly, um, that I've already recorded videos here before, and I've never apparently noticed that, uh, which is a little bit strange. But Sector 1, then, this is not where I'm expecting to be quite quick. And a 31-0 there is, yeah, not a particularly, you know, big time to write home about, but it's through this middle sector where hopefully... The car is going to come a little bit more alive there. Liam Lawson in the other machine. He is going to set a 31-3. So again, a couple of tenths down off his teammate at the moment. But, you know, how many times have I said that this season there? As we've got one of the Saubers, I believe that's Bottas, uh, making his way out onto the track. Hopefully he's going to get out of the way. As the flying fin there will just about move, so that's okay. We'll obviously make sure with Liam as well in the other car. And that he doesn't get held up either by everything going on there. Is, I mean, yeah. I mean, they're taking it completely flat out inside this game as well. It's so, so cool seeing them out of grip there. Is Yuki. Okay, 42-7. Uh, quicker than quite a lot of cars, apparently, through the middle sector. Bearing in mind, Russell and Piastri have already set a lap time as well. And we'll see Liam Lawson then in the other cars go to a 44-1. So where is he losing so much time around this lap against his teammate here. It really is not one. It's so odd. You know, I I went on ball with him throughout most of that section of circuit, and he's still yeah, not really able to do anything. There is Sonoda. He's gone quicker than Russell. What on earth is that from Yuki Sonoda there? A one... What's that? A 144-001? I mean, Verstappen's absolutely smashed everyone out of the park. How on earth has he gone two seconds clear of a McLaren? As, yeah, Lawson, on the other hand, does go quicker than Logan Sargent, 1.4 off the pace. But that's a magnificent lap by uh, Yuki. Maybe. His yellow flag's out. Someone's gone off. Could do with a red flag now. 
Everyone else has finished their runs. What on earth's happened? Who's gone off? Ocon's had a spin at turn 19. Let's take a look. Right at the end of his lap as well. That's really disappointing. It's definitely not turn 10 either, buddy. But yeah, that, that helps us out. I mean, it has been a magnificent effort by Yuki Tsunoda there. He's quicker than Lewis Hamilton right now. We might genuinely have pace to be fighting right up towards the front. Not sure how Checo is four seconds off his teammate either. I still think the gaps inside this game are maybe a little bit too extreme. But let's ride on board then with Liam Lawson for his second run here around the Belgian Grand Prix. I mean, he's just outside of the Q2 cutoff right now. So Guan Yu has just found a little bit more time on his last run. But I mean, yes, yeah, Sonoda, he's still around the Albums and Ricardos where we would expect him to be. But maybe if both Mercs are struggling for pace this weekend, then there might be a chance to fight a bit higher up there. It's 31-1 first sector. That's a lot more like it. So only another couple of tenths improvement. But clearly Liam now, yeah, building up confidence right towards the end of this first session there. And, you know, he, he only needs to get ideally within like a second of Yuki here to see him into Q2. It really does feel like this car is starting to go from strength to strength. And I'm hoping those new upgrades as well are going to help us out. As, yeah, look at that Perez. He's only improved to P8 there, so I reckon the pace is legit. It's just, you know, Ferrari, Verstappen and Norris have got a bit of a clear-cut advantage over everybody else, and the gaps are just oddly spread out. We want to see Liam do a 43 through this middle sector. That would be really good. You know, a 42 would be even better, of course. And a 43-1. The pace is coming for Liam Lawson at the moment right now. This would be fantastic for him if this is his last Formula 1 Grand Prix uh, with the team. A Q2 appearance would certainly be one to try and boost his stock just a little bit more here uh, before the end of the season. But yeah, can we... Or before the summer break even. But yeah, in towards the final couple of corners then comes Liam Lawson. What is the lap time going to be? He's not going to probably go quicker than Yuki, but he could be around sort of, you know, the Russell and Ocon territory. 44. He does go slower than Ocon by a tenth of a second. So, yeah, that's given us a seven-tenth buffer over Miata behind. He is on a lap, though. Joe's on a lap. Gasly's on a lap. So let's just slowly start simming forward then, and we'll wait and see whether anybody else is able to improve. Sergeant goes 16th. Not too far behind. Miata then down into the drop zone as well. Then as Hulkenberg's done, he is out in Q1. Zhou Guan Yu still going. Gasly up towards the line. His teammate's done pretty well. Gasly goes even better. So are we going to see, you know, Rotobo Miata, Zhou Guan Yu? Uh, yeah, St. Magnuson's not improving, which I guess is good for us. Uh, but yeah, so I guess the real question is Zhou or Miata. Are we going to see either of them improve here? Down through the final couple of corners comes Rotobo. Up towards the line. What is the time going to be for the V-car driver? He stays 18th. He does improve, but he doesn't go any higher up the order. Zhou Guan Yu is going to be the last one, then spring a surprise. He's already quicker than the Valtteri Bottas at the moment, so I'm not expecting uh, the kick sour driver to find another second on this lap out of the final corner. Up towards the line. What is the time going to be? He will stay P20. Doesn't even improve. We've got both cars through. Well, like I said, if that is going to be Liam Lawson's last Formula 1 Grand Prix for now, that's a pretty good result done there. Alex Albon has got some grip penalties, but yeah, by a tenth and a half, Lawson made it through there pretty comfortably uh, in the end. You know, he beat out all the drivers I would expect to see him beat, which I guess is good. Uh, Yuki, though, we've got a big opportunity. We might be able to get into Q3, uh, but it de kind of depends on whether the Mercedes pull their finger out. Well, here we go then. Yuki Tsunoda going out for his first run here in Q2. Of course, he only needed the one run in that first session, so that's looking pretty good for him. I'm just going to send out Liam Lawson not too far behind, just to make sure um, that he doesn't get in the way of his teammate there. As through turn one will go, Yuki will only just get around him, but he will get that little bit of a buffer there. Maybe he can provide Lawson uh, with a bit of slipstream towards the end of his lap. But we'll have to wait and see, yeah, just how the timings work there. So, Yuki, I, it, you know, for him, it's far more about what those other, you know, what Mercedes are going to be able to do. Are they really lacking that much pace around this venue? Or is there a little bit more in that car? Is Yuki first split? Slight improvement over what we saw in Q1. I have, once again, just tweaked his wing angle slightly uh, as his confidence actually went down uh, between free practice and qualifying there. So, wasn't too happy with the setup and... Of course, it might help us a little bit more as we head into the GP as well then. But Albon sets the first time on the board. Not a bad lap time by the Williams, but we should hopefully be able to go quicker than that. 
Yeah, and we've got, like, the, you know, the likes of Verstappen and things like that going on flies. Perez crosses the line. As one of the mercs there, yeah, just, just jump out of the way for Yuki here. Again, we're looking for our mid to high 42 through that middle sector. And Hamilton, yeah, that's, that's much quicker. Hamilton now uh, onto a 143.5. So he's found another half a second of what he was able to do in Q1. I mean, Sonoda seems pretty racy once again. He's finding just small amounts of time throughout those first couple of sectors. So it's not looking bad for Yuki. But yeah, I just can't help but wonder if... Yeah, Mercedes have got that little bit extra. Then there's not really going to be a lot we're going to be able to do there. Through the final couple of corners with Sonoda once again. What is the time going to be on the board? I reckon he'll hopefully go between Albon and Alonso. Which he will pretty comfortably. Not that far behind Alonso. But finding those six tenths is incredibly difficult. What is Liam Lawson going to be able to do then? He is on a scrub set of tyres, so I'm not expecting him to set the world alight. As he'll get past one of those McLarens there down at the end of the Kevel straight. 31-1. Uh, That's pretty good going. So happy to see him just improving a little bit more. As hopefully Yuki's going to get out of the way. 43-2. So Lawson is getting faster and faster uh, as the weekend sessions progress there. As Yuki hopefully... Is not going to block him either. Come on, get out of the way. Thank you. Actually, good teamwork there by both of our drivers. So maybe Lawson just got a faint slipstream as well. But, I mean, yeah, he's just slot into that gap between Yuki uh, and Alex Albon as well behind. As Ferrari, both of their cars going out for their runs. So we've gone quicker than everyone we would expect to right now. As Lawson up to the line, he will go P9. Only six tenths away. It sounds like a lot, but it's pretty good. Well, getting both drivers then ready for their final push lap here in qualifying. I'm actually going to take manual control there. Just because Lawson accidentally got the jump on Yuki on their out laps. And I was hoping that maybe we could try and use Yuki just to give Liam a bit of a slipstream around the lap there. I think he's going to be a bit too far away uh, for it to make any difference come the end of the session. But the idea was there. Uh, Yuki's still inside that top 10. The real question is Stroll, who I don't... Yeah, Stroll's finished. I think we're going to see Q3 then with one of our cars here. Which would certainly be a good result to write home about. I mean, admittedly, we're still near enough a second behind the car in front. But, yeah, I mean, it's my money's on Yuki being the one that makes it through. But maybe Lawson could spring a surprise here. There we go. One, a 30.9 first split as a 31-0. Lawson is again finding more and more time towards the end of qualifying. And it is absolutely fantastic news for us there as we've got a bit of traffic just up in front. I mean, this is kind of what you expect to see in Formula 1. That maybe, just maybe, uh, Lance Stroll struggling of a weekend. And that way you can capitalise and try and get your own cars inside the top 10. As we've got one of the Mercs there just getting in the way. And that's Yuki's lap ruined. So Yuki's known up. We're going to have to abandon that one. We may as well save the tyres ready for the race. Uh, so we will call him in to the pit box at the end of this lap. How is Lawson getting on? I think he got round... Uh, that mistake. No, there it is. Come on, don't say that. Moke's going to hold up both of them. Come on, get out of the way. Thank you. We kind of get round him. That was the time. I mean, it's a 42-9. Okay. Lawson might genuinely be about to spring the surprise here. If he can get around Yuki quite cleanly, which he will do. He maybe got a little bit of a draft from him as well. Could it be Liam Lawson that gets his first Q3 appearance, I think, ever inside this game? He's getting more and more competitive right as he gets to crunch point. Inside this series, I mean, even if he could just go P11 and go ahead of Ricardo, that would be fantastic for us. Is out of the final corner, up towards the line. Liam Lawson, it's going to be a 44. He goes fractions away. Only a tenth off Sonoda, though. That is fantastic news, and I believe his best ever qualifying in this series. Apart from maybe Canada. We might have got both cars into Q3 there. Well, yeah, heading into Q3, though, not really a lot we're going to be able to do in this final session, are we? Tsunoda, uh, one second behind George Russell here as we make our way up the Kemmels, uh, sorry, up the back straight in towards the final couple of corners of the lap. I think if he was going to go better than anybody here, we would basically just be expecting a miracle. Leclerc, though, does seem to have gone faster than Verstappen, so Ferrari, their car's working really, really nicely here. Is Yuki going to improve? Yeah, no, he doesn't. So, I did the first lap on old tyres, the second one on a fresh set. Sonoda's going to line up P10 then on the grid ready for this race. I mean, still a good effort going when you think we finally seem to be getting a bit closer to the Aston Martins and the Mercs uh, when they have a bit of a terrible time of things. I guess the real question is how badly will Stroll struggle uh, to get through the rest of, you know, those 
other cars early on here. I mean, look how tight the margins are. Sainz stays in P3 there, but only goes a tenth and a half away. Leclerc making his way out of the final corner. Is this going to be an improvement? Yes, it is, but not by much. As Verstappen there on his final ditch run to try and get a pole position at what isn't his home Grand Prix, but obviously, yes, yeah, certainly loves the Ardennes Forest as well. And at the spa Francorchamps champs circuit there as he makes his way in towards that final corner. Will it be Verstappen who gets himself onto that pole position? Or will it be Ferrari that takes glory? It is going to be Max Verstappen by three tenths of a second there. I think we were always optimistic to see anybody else claim it. Uh, and Red Bull, look at that, end up with a 1-2. So Verstappen, he didn't go fastest in all three sessions, but he certainly seemed control right when it mattered there. Both Red Bulls, both Ferraris, both McLarens. A little bit of a mix-up further back. Um, but yeah, let's get into the Grand Prix. Well, it's a fantastic turnout, as it always is here in Belgium, as we prepare for 44 laps around Spa. Motor car racing didn't have the best of starts at spa francorchamps Only one driver registered for the very first car race back in 1921, so a motorbike race replaced it instead. Times have changed, and now Spa is a solid fixture on the F1 calendar. Spa Francorchamps should need no introduction. From the sweeping curve of Eau Rouge and Radion to the flat out descent through Pouan, this is just over four miles of wonderful racing wherever you look in the Belgian countryside. The excitement is building, there's electricity in the air, but there's no surprise in that. It's race day. Well, I'll be honest, after all the excitement of qualifying, I kind of forgot that we were looking at a wet race here as we head into the GP. It looks like we are going to see changeable conditions towards the end of the afternoon. So it is meant to dry up. Timing that switch over to the dries is going to be absolutely critical here. But no real mix-up of strategy early on. Apart from Liam Lawson, apparently, who the team want him to do a one-stop inters to inters. I don't quite get how that works, um, but maybe we'll do it and try and have some quicker pace as well earlier on in the GP, of course. The fuel efficiency of this car uh, is absolutely fantastic, so we can afford to underfuel it a little bit and maybe just get the jump on a couple of other people uh, off the start of the race. We want to go really aggressive with both drivers here, Lawson as well. I'm going to take the gamble with him. You know, he's got to try and deliver, and if he can get points, maybe, just maybe, he can save his seat. Let's do this thing, though. It's time for the Belgian Grand Prix. The anticipation is really building here. The fans in attendance are absolutely buzzing with excitement. And it's always an entertaining race when Yuki Tsunoda is involved. Starting P10 puts them in the right place to get some points. But there's still a lot to do. So let's see what today has in store, shall we? Get ready, it's the Belgian Grand Prix. And it slides out, and away we go. Well, there we go then. Hopefully we'll get a fairly clean, tidy start between everybody. But the real question for us is just how will Lance Stroll get through the early laps of this one? You know, do we use Liam Lawson to try and keep him at bay? Only time it will tell there, but fairly composed start. Yuki holding on to the place ahead of Daniel Ricciardo there. It's side by side up through a Rouge and Radion. Looks like Perez has made the move work on his teammate Max Verstappen as well. As we ride with uh, Charles Leclerc here trying to get the run up the Kemmel straight. You can see those Red Bulls moving around. Are we going to see Leclerc go for it though? Tricky conditions up towards turn five and just so it gets it slowed down on the inside of the circuit there. So not really much movement going on at all up and down the order. I'm going to tell immediately then Lawson, he's going to look after those tyres a bit more if he wants to try and effectively one-stop this race. So we're going to tell him to get the elbows out against Lance. Defend from that car behind. Always defend from that car behind as well. And if he can do a good job of this, maybe he can build up some confidence as well here because Lance Stroll, you know, it is important that we keep that Aston Martin back early on. You can just see there immediately chopping in in front of him down through uh, down through Poo on there. As yeah, you can see Sonoda just trying to build up a little bit of a buffer uh, over Daniel Ricciardo as well. So we'll just tone things back down 
uh, with the fuel on the tyres just a little bit here again. You know, we were a second a lap slower than the cars in front in qualifying. I'm not expecting us, you know, to be able to keep up with them as we head into the Grand Prix or anything like that. But, yeah, if we can just kind of force Stroll back a bit more, then maybe it'll open up an opportunity for us into this race there. As I mean, yeah, Lawson already. I mean, he's kind of being used, um, you know, to, to screw over some of the other cars. But, you know, that's the nature of when you are the number two driver. Sometimes you've got to play the number two role as you can see, well, a lot of Constantina and up down towards the final corner. Not too sure what that was all about. I think Yuki there just, yeah, not, not nothing too much to worry about there. But this is the kind of race where you would expect there to be a bit of chaos. It's Spa in the wet. It, it might well happen as we make our way back down through turn one. There's a bit of battling going on in front there as Alonso trying to look past the Mercs. I mean, Aston Martin have usually been quicker than Mercedes so far this year. Oh, don't say they're going to go side by side. Yes, they are. Jordan Russell and Fernando Alonso there. And what a brave move that is by Fernando to try and get all the way around the outside. Up through a Rouge and Rally on. He won't quite have the legs off of the corner. But he's still again going to try and look for it. But yeah, just lacking that straight line speed against those two Mercedes cars there. Daniel Ricciardo trying to look past us. as Stroll again. Iron up a move on Lawson. Come on, man. you got to defend. Oh, no. Why has he got a fault? Eh? We got a fault on Liam Lawson's car. Oh, no, that's Carlos Sainz. Don't know what that's about. So I guess we will tell him not to worry about defending anymore. I guess we'll tell him to go overtake aggression high. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm quite happy, you know, prepared to throw him under the bus here today. If we can try and keep up and upset Lance Stroll's rhythm, then that's exactly what we're going to try and do here. As temperature just starting to creep up a little bit uh, on both tyres. So, yeah, let's just try and see what we can do. Uh, over the early laps there. I mean, it's it's going to be a battle between us and Ricardo. I can't help but feel. Uh, unless, of course, Stroll can get to us. As he's now made the move on Esteban Ocon as well. But yeah, even in the wet though. Spa is still quite a fast-paced Grand Prix. Haven't really double-checked it. But yeah, we could see a switch to drives a bit earlier on. It is only yeah, really meant to be towards the end of the afternoon though. That it's kind of guaranteed uh, to be dry compound weather. As yeah, I think Lawson... Ultimately, he isn't going to be able to do a lot too early on there. He may as well try and start saving some of the battery. Otherwise, we're going to be in a world of hurt later on there. As Ricardo now dropping away. So that works out really well for Yuki here. He's just going to try and use a little bit of his battery uh, down the hill. Looks like we are saving just about enough fuel as well here early on. So we've got yellows out. Oh, man. Oh, man. Lawson with a lockup. He's watching Sergeant, and I believe that's Ocon battle. And he's going to let the other Alpine go through as well then. So really disappointing for us. He is still in the race though, which I guess is good. And yeah, Ricardo. I mean, he is dropping back into Stroll's clutches incredibly early in this GP as well. So not too sure what to make of that one for Danny Rick. But I guess it bodes well for us. Uh, but not when Stroll is able to get past him pretty quickly. And Lawson's made another mistake. What is he doing? How do you run wide through a rouge? Well, I mean, if you're going to do that, don't bother lifting out of it and losing a place as well. You can see Miata now trying to make it happen. I think, yeah, I mean, his driver confidence is through the floor, isn't he? Lawson, he's, he's over, isn't it, for him? I don't think there's a lot else we can do. We'll tell him to avoid high-risk curbs. We'll tend to go medium on the aggression, but I don't think there's a lot we can do to save that driver. I think we have well and truly ruined him uh, inside F1 Manager, I'm afraid. But Yuki Tsunoda, the same can't be said for him. He's actually not losing that much to the uh, to the Aston Martin uh, or to the Mercedes in front of him. But, yeah, Stroll behind is slowly but surely closing in as well here. So there might be an opportunity, you know, if the weather changes or anything like that. Just to try and do something exciting, something a bit different here. And really mess up the rhythm of some of the other drivers. Not really able to save up much battery at the moment. As, yeah, you can see Stroll now is pretty much caught up to the back of him. I mean, do you gamble? Do you gamble and hope that, you know, it's meant to get drier again? But I don't think it's going to get dry enough and it's just meant to ramp up. So, how are other drivers' tyres looking as well? As we've got some faults forming for other cars... I mean, he's got the best tyres of anybody on the grid right now. So, 20% over 10 laps for a lot of other people. They might they might not be able to make it to the dry period. 
depending on what happens. So we might actually be in quite a good spot here against some of the other AI. Is yeah, there we go. Sonoda loses the place to Stroll. How's his pace looking against those cars in front though? He's they're all running pretty similar times, so I guess for us it's just going to be about trying to stick with him as best as we can here throughout the next few laps. But yeah, this car this weekend. Oh, we got VSC. Someone's gone. Don't know who that is. It's one of the Hasses. I think that is uh, Hulkenberg who's been it. So he's been it at turn four. Now here we are tackling turn three. Oh, what is that huge shunt? Massive crash for Hulkenberg. I'm staggered that thing isn't completely out of the Grand Prix. And I'm staggered that's only a VSC because that was a heavy, heavy hit. And surely that car is done with. Yep, there we go. It is out. Of the Grand Prix there. So, luckily Lawson wasn't involved. Um, but, I mean, how is that only a VSC? That's what I want to know. And could it be worth boxing now onto a fresh set of the uh, intermediate tyres there? We'll try and just obviously use this as an excuse to save some fuel. I don't think it's going to be worth boxing for new tyres. Might be worth it with Liam if he can get all the way around. Uh, but, yeah, we'll just obviously harvest up some energy, everything like that. Um, but yeah, I think we'll I think we'll stick out there at the moment. As where is Lawson then? I think we'll tell him to dive into the pit lane, just so we know he can safely make it all the way uh, to the dry period as well. Then if he opts for another set of tyres, and hopefully he's going to have a bit of pace over some of the other runners as well. Then, but yeah, there we go. Virtual safety car is coming to an end, so we'll get both drivers to carry on pushing once more. And I mean, how how have we lost so much to Stroll? Oh no, I'm watching the wrong car, aren't I? So that's okay. And there we go. Green flag racing once again then. So we can get both drivers going back on with it. Are we going to see anybody try and gamble over onto a set of the drives? I'm absolutely adamant it is not worth it here. But I am going to start utilising the battery to the best of our ability here. As circuit now, yeah, is claimed to be dry. So what I'm going to do is just through the first corner, we're going to tell him to deploy. We're only going to really do it with Yuki because he's kind of the only one that really matters at this stage of the afternoon. But we're just going to tell him to deploy that battery out of the first corner. And you can see normally. I mean Stroll apparently is doing it as well. But you can gain quite a lot from that. As Sainz. He's opted to box. Onto a fresh set of the Inters. So clearly felt that was worth the time lost for him. As yeah Stroll's actually doing really well here. Like Lance Stroll is genuinely proving himself to be quite a threat against his teammate Alonso. Who is clearly really struggling in that car. So maybe there, there are going to be some victims here at this stage of the day. There's new fastest laps coming in by quite a few people. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's similar to what we saw in free practice, isn't it? Where it's just not quite getting damp enough. Uh, so I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. As there we go. It's back to damp again. And now we've just used a little bit of deploy out of the car as well. That gap to Alonso is not coming down right now. So we kind of need to see some chaos at some point here. Otherwise, I can't help but wonder if we're just going to be in a little bit of no man's land. Unless we can make the switch perfectly and maybe other drivers have to box before it goes to the dry compounded size. It's kind of a bit, yeah, again, lateral inside this game. Uh, there, there's just still too much of a gap between like the Aston Martins and the Mercs uh, and the back market cars still, which is rather frustrating because even when I think uh, Yuki's doing a better job, can't really do a lot. Against those other cars as well. There is Stroll. Yeah, it's just really moving his way through. How are the tyres looking on those other cars? I mean, we're still in a better shape than most of them. So it could be that we see a switch. You know, for the likes of Alonso and co. But then what worries me is we're probably not going to be much quicker towards the end of the afternoon. I'm going to save up all the rich revs until right towards the end of the race. As most of the other cars behind us now are opting to box. But yeah, we're kind of not really worried about them anymore. A bit like we saw at Hungary... Really, really focused on those cars in front rather than those behind us here. So, you know, if, if there's a chance for points, then we're going to try and take it. And, I mean, Oscar Piastri is starting to struggle. So, maybe there will be. Um, but, yeah, as we cross over half distance, Piastri apparently has got some mechanical gremlins. But it is still mainly about, you know, we're, we're not losing anything to Alonso in front. But, you know, is he just trying to hang on to... The you know the kind of the optimal time to pit for dries. I mean the rain now is starting to taper off. So I mean what are his tyres on? They're on 54%. Russell's on 48. So we've got yellow flags for Stappen's developed a mechanical fault. 
And we got a competitor spin. And apparently it's Liam Lawson. Why, why is Sedona moaning? Oh no, it's Miata, apparently. So we've got yellow flags out for a spin for Miata. Tucked up behind his teammate. And Perez, yep, just about getting around him as well. That would not have been good uh, for them a bit further up. But yeah, could we see Russell being forced to pit here before it's time as well? There's Lawson, I mean, yeah, we're just kind of, you know, he's, I've, I think I've set his target to P19 again, so that's all we can really hope for with him. Is there we go. Track conditions have apparently changed to dry, but it's kind of now or never against the AI. We just need to see if they're going to dive in a bit too soon still. Uh, which they still aren't, so... As track conditions have once again changed to damp. What on earth is happening in this GP? It is rather unpredictable at the moment. But yeah, Russell is still trying to hang on out there. And I mean, 43%. Surely, surely he's got to dive in before it makes the call to dry. Surely we can try and get the advantage over him as Russell... I mean, he's on two-thirds distance on that set of tyres. Now we've got yellows out again. As the rain has now stopped fully. So it is not going to get damp again before the end of the afternoon. As Sergeant goes for another spin. There we go. What are they going on to? They're on to dries. Oh, it was definitely the right lap for them. Definitely the right lap for them as well. So we'll tell Liam to box now. Uh, we'll go on to the dry compound tyres. And he can afford to work those towards the end of the afternoon. We'll go full fuel. And a bit of aggression as well. But yeah, Yuki Sonoda. We've got to take everything out of this set of rubber this lap. Maybe the AI will struggle just to get up to temperature. Uh, Lance Stroll will monitor that gap to him. Uh, no, that, that doesn't seem to be happening. Stroll has already got the pit stop margin over us. So yeah, I think we've, we've misjudged that one slightly. And I think unfortunately it is going to cost us towards the end of the afternoon. Well, oh, I forgot to tell Yuki to pit. No. Oh, damn it, man. Oh, that was stupid. That was so stupid. I mean, I don't think it's going to make a difference unless something crazy happens, but forgot to get him to dive in. And I mean, look at the gap we've got to Gasly in 12th, though. I don't think it's going to make much difference unless we see something crazy. So, Sonoda's going to come in. He's going to go a lap down to Verstappen as well, though, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, we have absolutely thrown that away towards the end of the afternoon. I mean, could Oscar Piastri... Still end up with a mechanical issue here. I don't think he is. Um, but yeah, counting down then towards the final few laps. I mean, how many times have we said it inside this game? I guess Perez this weekend has given his team a little bit of a better run for his money. The Sainz as well reporting more and more issues on that Ferrari car. But yeah, if the laps count down though here. Oh, oh, we've got a safety car. I don't think it's going to make a difference. I think it's too late in the race. But Ricardo stopped. Don't know what he's done. As I mean, yeah, we'll... Go like that, we'll go like that, and we'll go like that. We'll do the same with Lawson. I mean, maybe we could try and box him. Where is Lawson on the road? Maybe we could try and box him onto a set of uh, fresh set of softs. Again, I don't think it's going to make much difference here. But Yuki's going to be allowed to bunch back up then with those other, you know, faster cars, hopefully. But even then, I mean, Verstappen's got the lap on him, hasn't he? So I think that it might be that Sonoda gets the lap back. Um, but we don't really see anything else for it there. As he's going to tuck up into the train. We've got to be able to get past Verstappen though. If we want to be able to do anything. But I think this race might end up behind, end up finishing behind the safety car. Which is going to be a huge, huge shame for us to be honest. Because, you know, with everybody bunching up. It's a shame, yeah, if I just pit that one lap earlier. Lapped cars now can overtake. So we will hopefully move through. But, yeah, on to the final lap, though. They're not going to allow us to do it, I don't think. And as we make our way, then, through the final lap, I think this is the first time we've ever seen it happen inside this game. Safety car is going to be coming to an end. Max Verstappen, though, is going to lead the way home for yet another win here at the Belgian Grand Prix. Admittedly, the gaps aren't going to look as crazy as normal uh, between your top ten drivers here. But, yeah, ultimately, a little bit of a shame... Uh, that we're going to end up a lap down from my own stupid error as well. But Lawson, yep, yeah, that pit stop was completely pointless as well. Perez, for some reason, is trying to reheat his tyres. I mean, could Yuki try and get the jump on Verstappen out of that final corner? It would be an illegal move. But Max Verstappen out of the final corner then. He is going to win the Belgian Grand Prix. Race over. P11 for us yet again. We're getting so close to those Aston Martins and the Mercs. 
I really do genuinely think that big upgrade for the second half of the year might well make the difference. Sometimes I think you just have to accept that it's not going to be your race. It's been a very frustrating day for them and they lead without any points. That's not the sort of performance we'd expect to see really. And no doubt Verstappen fans will be celebrating the Dutchman's achievement. And that victory takes them into double figures for the year. An incredible 10th win of the season. And there you have it. A smiley podium lineup at the Belgian Grand Prix. Well, Karun, how do you think they'll be feeling in the team garage at the end of that? It was a strangely mixed weekend for them. We saw one driver put in a strong performance, but it was a different story for the other. Definitely positives there, though. And that is that for this weekend's F1 action here in Belgium. For the next round, Formula One won't be straying too far. We'll be heading to the dunes of Zandvoort and the lightning speed of the Dutch Grand Prix. Well, there we go then. Max Verstappen takes yet another victory this season. The Dutchman back on top here in Belgium. And as everyone goes into the summer break, yeah, I think Verstappen quite rightly is going to be quite proud of how he's ran the first half of the campaign. For again, us again, though, it seems like we're getting a lot of repetition in this series at the moment. We come through for P11 with Yuki. Lawson gets the objective that we set for him. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to see a bit of a shake-up inside the team after the summer break there. Just Ricardo and Hulkenberg that failed to see the chequered flag this weekend. But no real supplies is further up the order there. Verstappen now has a 74-point lead over Lando Norris. Uh, so pretty much exactly what he's got IRL heading into the summer as well. There with Leclerc in P3. So your top three are exactly the same as real life. Sainz, Piastri and Perez there running at your top six. And at both Astons and at both Mercedes as well there. Constructors-wise, uh, again, Ferrari just starting to close in that gap on McLaren. So at least there might be something to watch in terms of that fight as well. And Pit Stop Award. Uh, we actually got in there this time. We got 10 points on the team uh, by opting to box at some point during the Grand Prix. So that's going to give us a little bit of a buffer. And we actually jumped Williams uh, with that result as well there. So I guess that's one happy thing to report on as well but thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed and we'll be back very soon with more formula one content